All right, this is the year later on this week, February 29th. It's leap day, but why do we ever need a leap day in the first place? It's actually a little complicated. Let's start out by talking about what a year is in general. One year is the time it takes the Earth to go around the sun one time. That one trip around the sun, well, how long does it last? 365 days, right? That's actually not right. It's 365 days with a remainder. That .2422 extra is very important. What that is, that equates out, if you do the math and calculate it out, we have an extra 5.8 hours that aren't accounted for each year. So our calendar year is too short, and if we kept that going over time, check this out, in 100 years, our calendar would be off by 24 days. So March 21st would end up being February 25th. It would be all big mess. Our seasons wouldn't be the same. So we got to fix it. How do we fix it? Let's add one day every four years. That's the leap day. Cool. That makes sense, right? So now our yearly average, 365.25 days. Is that good enough? Well, kind of, but not exactly. Check this out. Now we still have a little bit of a remainder again. Now we're actually 0 .0078 days too much. That's 11 minutes. Doesn't sound like a lot, but if we did just allow that to happen in 100 years, well, our calendar will be off by 18 hours. I know this is a lot of math, so let's do some more. We call it leap year hopscotch. And with this, what you do, you skip the leap year if it falls at the start of a century. So in 2100, if we're still around, Yes, there will be a skipped leap year, but unless that year is divisible by 400. Bottom line, when you do all of that, the hopscotch rules as we call it, you're only off by this, 0 .0003 days. That's only 25.9 seconds. That's not a big deal because at that rate, it would take 3,333 years to be off by one day. And that's why we use the leap day.